One evening I was out hiking in the country when it started to rain heavily. I looked around for shelter and down a muddy lane I spotted a dilapidated cottage with a thatched roof. When I opened the door the inside was dark and damp. At the far end of the cottage there was a room with a little rusted stove. I packed some pieces of wood into it and lit the fire. Just as I was taking off my boots and sitting down to warm myself, I was startled to hear some footsteps in the passage outside. Suddenly a man appeared in the doorway. He didn't even seem to notice me as he walked straight over to the stove and began warming his hands in front of it. He was dripping wet and his clothes were completely soaked. It didn't seem to be possible to get so wet, even on such a rainy night. Water dripped from his old hat and sizzled on the embers of the fire. I cleared my throat and the man turned his head and stared at me over his shoulder. I could see his teeth chattering and noticed that his face was pale white. Not many people come here, he said. Why is that? I asked, trying to make conversation. Ghosts, he said, turning back to the fire. The ghost of the man that lived here. It's a sad tale. He drowned himself down in the pond by the old mill. They found him floating there and when they pulled him out, he was all slimy. Since then, some folks say they've seen him floating on the pond and other folks have seen him lurking outside this cottage, walking up and down. Drowned himself in the pond, so they say, and now he walks the night. The man sighed and I can hear the water squelching his boots. But that's just the story the stupid superstitious people tell. He continued, I never saw a ghost myself. Well, I haven't either, I laughed. I never believe the tall tales people tell. He looked at me again and said, Some folks do and some folks don't. The water was still oozing from his clothes, dripping all over the floor, and a dank smell filled the room. W What's the matter? I asked. Can't you get dry? Dry? He laughed weakly and his laughter turned to a hacking cough. I can never get dry, he cried, and with that he thrust his muddy hands into the fire up to his elbows. The flames didn't touch him at all. Without another word I grabbed my boots and ran screaming out into the night. As the woman drove down a deserted highway, she noticed a lone pair of headlights quickly approaching her car from behind. When the car came closer, she noticed that it was going to overtake her. The car drew up beside her, but then the driver suddenly swerved back behind her car. She started getting nervous and kept an eye on the strange car in her rear view mirror. He pulled up dangerously close to her, to her rear bumper and began flashing his high beams at her. The headlights dimmed for a moment, but then the high beams flashed again and the car behind her surged forward. The car followed her very closely, and on tight curves or over hills he would flash his high beams on and off. The frightened woman struggled to keep her eyes on the road and fought the urge to keep looking at the car behind her. Finally, she approached her exit, but the car continued to follow, flashing the high beams again and again. The terrified woman took out her mobile phone and dialed 911. When the operator answered, the woman screamed into the phone, A car is following me. He keeps tailgating and blinking his lights at me. The woman gave her address and in a few moments she saw the red and blue lights of a police car in the distance. She breathed a sigh of relief as she pulled into her driveway. But suddenly the strange car pulled into the driveway behind her and began blinking its lights on and off like a maniac. The police car screeched to a halt on the woman's front lawn and the two police officers jumped out with their guns drawn. They pulled the man out of the strange car and forced him to lie face down on the lawn. They handcuffed him as he screamed, There's someone in her car! There's someone in her car! The two policemen suddenly pointed their guns in the woman's direction and fired. The woman screamed, but when she turned around, she saw the bloody corpse of a murderer fall out of her back seat. There was a large butcher knife still clasped in his cold, dead hand. 
The police searched her back seat and found duct tape, a blindfold, and a pair of handcuffs laying there. The woman realized that the man in the strange car had been trying to save her. When the police released him, he explained that as he pulled up behind her car and his headlights lit up her back seat, he had seen a man with a butcher knife rising up behind her. Just as the madman was about to stab her, he flashed his high beams and the figure crouched back down. I flashed my high beams every time I saw him raise the knife, he said. Linda had always been the apple to her father's eye. She was a beautiful 14-year-old girl with blonde, curly hair and big blue eyes. She had many friends, for she was one of the most popular girls in school. Her greatest pleasure was fashion. She was always dressed in the newest, fanciest, most expensive clothes. Just this week, her father bought her a ridiculously expensive green Italian leather jacket which she wore always, everywhere. Her second greatest pleasure were horses. Just last month, her father bought her a ridiculously expensive, imported German dress, dressage horse, which she bragged about to anyone who would listen. Just yesterday, Linda was out riding said horse, galloping across acres and acres of farmland. No one was going to stop her. She didn't care if her horse was trampling down crops and straw. Her daddy was always going to get her out of trouble. He always had. When her horse bolted and she fell to the ground, she didn't cry out in anger or pain, though she did hurt herself. She was hit by surprise. Never had something so unpleasant happen to her and she wondered when someone would arrive to comfort her. Surely someone must have seen her fall. Everybody always looked at her, but not today. No one saw her vanish into those tall crops on the field. She called out, but no one answered. She realized with horror she couldn't get up, for she wasn't able to move her legs, even an inch. She lay there for what seemed like hours between tall, green crops and when she heard the sound of farming machines approaching, she grew to hate that damn grass-green jacket.